when uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp sent me a note this morning about the topic being stretching, I thought of a joke from Craig Ferguson, the comedian, but I can't share it on the air. Uh oh. <laughs> it's about a vacation he made to Big Sur a few years ago, and apparently there's a workout club there that he attended, and he admitted he wasn't in very good shape. But uh, it's one of those off air type of jokes because sometimes his humor is not. Not not necessarily family oriented, but we want to thank you for coming in today. Thank you. No, I uh, I have a perfect uh, scenario for this uh, discussion today. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, all of our excited people that are getting back into shape and dieting and trying to uh, you know make the new year a better year. And we're gonna focus on the uh, topic of stretching because there's lots of uh, opinions, lots of controversy about does it help? Is it good for you? Does it avoid injuries. What do I do? How do I stretch? So, And people um, after the last few days, when they get a little taste of that warmer air, they're thinking about getting out and yeah, doing things. No, I, in fact, uh, as soon as it rained and I could see the grass in my backyard, uh, we were already thinking about uh, spring projects. And then the snow came again and helped put that aside for me. So I I'm not too worried about it today. Yeah, I, I was going to say, <laughs> a couple of days where you don't have to worry about it. But uh, when we think about this, I, I know that from the chiropractic side, I've heard this before too as well, that if you don't just get moving, that you'll pay for it when you're older. Meaning just if you if you don't move. Right. Yeah, it's uh, we use a phrase frequent, move it or lose it. And uh, that, that actually applies not just to muscles, but to, to joints. People that have osteoarthritis, uh, we've learned over decades actually that uh, those that move in spite of pain actually move better and have less pain. Those that hold back and say, no, it hurts when I move and I'm not going to do that, they actually just get worse and worse. So that's true for bones as well. So let me start out by saying just for you on the show and those that are listening, I uh, pulled a calf muscle this morning. So, you know, here I am starting to do my New Year's workout and doing well and starting to be able to push and feeling really good about it. And uh, get a little calf muscle pull, and I'll uh, deny it in about three days, I hope. But uh, sometimes those can be really serious. But was it a question of did I not stretch? Or didn't I warm up enough? Things like that. So a lot of people, the big sales pitch on stretching is if you stretch before you work out, you're going to avoid injuries. And that's a kind of maybe yes and maybe no answer because injuries are really a pretty complex combination of uh Warming up and stretching we'll talk about specifically, but uh, a lot of it has to do with technique, with what you're doing. Are you using poor technique? Do you have an imbalance of muscles? I'll give you a great example. A lot of people come to me with low back pain, and if I can teach them how to stretch their hamstrings, the, the muscles down the back of your leg, their chronic or acute back pain seems to clear up and go away. And you, you say, well, wait a minute, why didn't you treat their back? And the answer is, the back wasn't the problem. That's the, that's the symptom. So a lot of times it's an imbalance of muscles or uh, we're, we're favoring one more than another. Um, you know, we, we uh, had a fun example of one of our PAs brought the other, the two, the two uh, Jeremy and Russell both work out together pretty regularly. So uh, Russell brought Jeremy this T-shirt a couple days ago that has this uh, silhouette of a huge upper body bodybuilder with, you know, bird legs. And the uh, title says, uh, friends don't let friends skip leg day. And so <laughs> there's, there's a, that picture is a, a perfect picture of uh, muscle imbalance. And we're not trying to get everybody to be bodybuilders, but we're saying, you know, if you're going to use uh, one, you ought to pay attention to the other. And so we're not trying to be weightlifters, but we definitely want to be active. And it is interesting as you do a little, you find your body has better flexibility, better mobility, better strength, and you start to feel good about what you're doing. I had a guy as I'm walking out uh, from my exercise, he says, you know, did you get the worst of your day done already? And I said, no, this is actually the fun part, you know. So if you uh, approach exercise as a, a pure pain only, you know, I've got to get through this, that actually works for the first part. But what you start to discover is, you actually see benefits. You start liking how you move, how you bend, how you twist. And so I really want to promote that. If you're starting a program or you started a month ago, uh, try to continue and try to work through little injuries like the one I talked about this morning. You know, don't, don't say, oh, well, I'm done. I tried and now I can't do anything. Find something else. You know, we'll work around that. But So number one, does stretching reduce injuries? The answer is it, it assists. 
And then the question is, is, well, should I do what they call static or standing still, like bending over, trying to reach my toes, or should I do dynamic, which has more uh, motion and you reach a little farther each time you move, whether it's uh, bending from one side to another, twisting side to side, uh, reaching for the sky. Uh, what I find, what I like is that it's the motion where I go carefully to begin with and then stretch a little farther, a little farther with each twist or with each bend. I like that better, but there is no good evidence to suggest that one or the other is better in a warm up situation. When you are done with your more vigorous exercise, one of the things a lot of people do is say, well, I got to go. So they just take off, you know, they, they don't do any kind of a cool down, warm down, however you want to say that. And that's where stretching really seems to make a difference for preventing injuries and feeling better and avoiding soreness. We've got more coming up with Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls, Idaho, the show Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. Bill Colley with you as well. Right now it's 840. We've got 34. We're talking stretching benefits today and what you should know. We've got more on the way. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. In studio with us, Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls, Idaho. It's 842. We're at 35. Uh, do want to mention Bill Colley as well, grabbing the telephones if you have a comment or question for the doctor while he's with us today. And we should point out, too, getting a hold of you at the office, uh, a lot of people may have questions, but they, you know, they don't want to pull over. And maybe if they're driving and doing those things, they may have later in the day. How would they get in touch with you? Yeah, our, uh, the office telephone number is 208 208- 933-4400. That's 933-4400. And uh, on the, our website is tripfamilymedicine.com. And on the uh, Facebook is Trip Family Medicine. So those are three different ways you can reach us. I have uh, very astute nurses. If you really do just have a question, off, uh, uh, sorry, they're awesome, but often they can uh, answer those questions. Often uh, questions really turn into more of an office visit because it's not really just a hypothetical. Right. It's I have a problem, and so just be prepared if they turn around and say, you know, what, why don't you come in and let's let's go over this. It's usually because they have enough experience to understand that, okay, this isn't just uh, some theoretical hypothetical, you know. So it's usually about you or somebody you know, and let's get them in. Let's talk about it. Now, and and for people who'd also like to know a little bit more, you're available on Facebook as well. You bet. And also, you have a, a video channel up now too. Well, and we're like today we're uh, we're filming in black and white, so you know you can't tell what color stripes are on my shirt. But <laughs> it's, we have uh, we have especially these uh, previous shows. If you had a topic you really liked, you can go back and and look at those. And if you get bored of my voice, make sure you talk, listen to the different uh, PAs and our nurse practitioner. Which, by the way, for right now, we're sad to say we're losing our nurse practitioner. She, Crystal, right? Yeah, Crystal and her husband are moving to Arizona. He uh, has a job he's in love with, and uh, she's going with him. And I told her, you know, you could consider leaving him, but that's probably not in my <laughs> my my <laughs> ethics. You know, we, we think families ought to stay together. Look, she, she suffered through uh, school at Roswell Park outside of Buffalo. Yeah. So Arizona's going to be that, a nice reward. Oh, yeah, yeah. Buffalo definitely uh, would be... Uh, a setback for, uh, you know, compared to Mesa or, <laughs> or wherever they're going to be in Arizona. Um, so we are in the middle of uh, continuing to expand as a as an office. We have uh, same-day appointments available. And that's something that's really almost unheard of in most of the family medicine uh, in our area, and that is if you have kids and they need to get seen because they have an earache or sore throat or somebody's got a cut or they hit their head, Call us. We will get you in, and especially if it's you know urgent, like the laceration, we would much rather have you come to us, even if you're new to us, so that you can be established. I had a lady come in yesterday. She was in a rear-ended in a car accident, clear down in Elko, and she drove her car all the way up here to Twin because she says, I want to see be seen by my doctor. And that really hit me. I thought, you know, I don't know that I would have been so devout as to make that drive, but the reality is, is there's a comfort level, and we get to know you, you get to know us, and uh, we do share among the different providers. So if you see me or you see one of the physician assistants, we pretty much have already discussed kind of where you are and the, and the worries and concerns that you have. So People who have been in an accident like that, that, you know, that topic of stretching, that was when I came out of a cast 15 years ago. 
uh, broke my leg 15 years ago this week and was in that fiberglass sock for about six weeks. The stretching was a huge component of getting me back on my feet on a regular basis. I mean, yeah. I had all sorts of exercise I exercises I had to do every morning. Yeah, no, and accidents are just plain tough because you have a sudden violent jerking type motion. It's going to strain muscles and you are going to get sore. Even if you think, oh, that was almost nothing, you know, usually the next day or the next two days, you really find out, oh, there was more to that than I thought. Um, and so... If I can see somebody the day of the accident, number one, I can make sure that there's no, you know, very threatening things like a broken neck or things like that. But I can also help loosen those muscles. We have medication that'll help kind of push you towards getting better faster and maybe avoid some of the the worst pain that you'd feel in the next few days. I had a friend who used to exercise on a regular basis, but would stretch for nearly as long as she would exercise. Now, I was never much into that. Of course, I was younger than much younger. But when I would go into the workout room or the gym, I would just simply figure, well, what I'm going to be doing is stretching. So I didn't get down on the floor and do any of the stretching exercises. I never had an issue. But she explained that you were supposed to have a long stretching warm-up in advance. I kind of agree with her. I also understand your position because I'm usually not giving myself enough time to do a 30-minute stretch and then a 30-minute warm-down. I can barely get my 30 minutes in of exercise. So... If that, I, if you identify with those thoughts, that you'll understand how I respond. Um, I, I have found that joint warm up, every joint that you're really going to work, shoulders and elbows and knees and hips, or whatever you're doing there, they all need to have the muscles around them warmed up. So whether it's just simple range of motion with, like we said, dynamic moving type stretches, or whether static stretches that, kind of like if you pull your arm across in front of you. Um, and pull on with one hand on the elbow so that you stretch your shoulder kind of side to side. That's an example of static stretching. Dynamic would be you're kind of like, uh, I'll say flailing, but it's waving your hands across your body back and forth so you, that you feel a stretch across the shoulder. Any of those work. Um, but I think the biggest issue is, is we need a warm-up that's more than, you know, two, three minutes and say, okay, I... Uh, I sat on a bike for three minutes and boy, I'm warm now. Why? Because your heart rate got to, you know, 82 and now you're quote warm. It, it really takes longer. It takes more like 10 minutes to, to get your body warmed up, ready to do more serious exercise. Uh, and you can get away without doing it until things go bad. And then you spend, you know, weeks or sometimes months recovering from that poor decision. So if you're trying to progress, pushing yourself, you want to make sure you're ready to go with the stretches, the warm-up. And then to, to do the cool-down for at least five minutes afterwards is a beautiful thing. And not only that, but if you do it with using a foam roller, uh, a lot of you have seen these. They're about six inches around. They just look like a big tube, but there's no, but they're solid. Um, and to roll your legs, your back, whatever is you've been using, is amazing. You'll find sore spots you didn't know you had, and that allows superficial soft tissue, meaning like the muscles, to recover a lot quicker between workouts so that, you know, you're more ready to go the next day or two days from now when you're going to do that same workout. So I really, you know, the warm-up, the, uh, I like the dynamic stretching more than the static, um, but, uh, and the foam rolling is kind of newer to me. You know, my wife was smart enough to buy one of those, bring them in the home, and I kind of joked about them. But I'll tell you what, when you lay on your side and go up and down the area between your knee and your hip, you're going to find out you have a sore area there that you didn't even know was sore. And, you know, I treat that all the time in the office. But It's stretching because you will meet people. I, I remember going to a picnic a few years ago, and uh, I decided to play a little touch football with some of the people who were there, some of them younger. Yep. And I felt great. And I've done the same thing bowling if I haven't done it for a while either, where you bowl three or four games, and then the next day when you get up, it's tough to walk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you find, where, where are you sore? Low back, hamstrings, upper hamstrings back? Hamstrings yeah. and uh, just you know just walking. But it, it that's where the stretching might have come in handy a little bit in advance, right? Yeah, or any kind of – it's you know, you don't see people go to the bowling alley and, and start doing squats and lunges and things to get themselves, their muscles warmed up. Would that have helped? Probably. Yeah, I mean – but if you've done nothing for a long time, you're going to be sore either way. <clears throat> I hadn't bowled in, in, you know, 15 years probably. And when I had bowled, I finished and I felt great. 
But for about the next two or three days, it was difficult to walk stairs. And what's interesting with the motion of bowling, you were stretching all those muscles while you bowled. So, you know, someone would say, well, look, I was stretching the whole time and I'm still sore. And the answer is you will be sore because those muscles haven't been used like that, strained like that for a long time. And now they're recovering. It's, it's kind of like the weightlifter that has increased their weight. They'll be more sore than they usually are. So right. It's a, it's a new strain. And, and it's a good thing. You know, my wife, I love how she uses her philosophies. You know, in fact, the, the statement that we use for our office, life's too short not to feel good. That come from, it came from my famous wife. So, you know, I think that's a great phrase. But similarly, when you're sore after a workout, not the same day, but the next day, she says that's just proof that you're alive, you know, that you're, that you're progressing and that you're alive. Sore muscles is a good thing, you know, to a degree. Well, so there's a gradual sort of, you don't want to rush in anything, but even stretching itself has to be gradual because a sudden movement could be yeah, disastrous. If, if you're really cool or cold and you uh, can't normally touch your toes and you just kind of force yourself right down there to touch those toes, you will you may find that you will you won't go back to those toes for a long time. Um, so it is it is a progressive uh, that's kind of why I like that dynamic. You do little swings, little reaches, little stretches, then you go a little farther moderately, and then you can reach farther, and then try stopping and, and reaching for your toes or, or uh, you know, pulling that arm all the way across your chest. So I do think it is gradual that way. Um, I want to go to a topic of heat versus ice, and the answer is yes. How's that? But the question is, right after an injury, let's say you sprain your ankle. This is my favorite. We talk about this all the time in my office. Um, if you sprain your ankle, do you ice it right away? Do you put heat on it? And most people know the answer on a sprained ankle. But like I just pulled this calf muscle, most people, I think, come to me in my office and say, oh, yeah, put heat on that. That'll make it all better. And they're right and they're wrong. And here's why. If you take the sprained ankle example, you can see the swelling that goes with a sprained ankle. If you put that ankle in warm water, hot water, it will loosen up and that ankle will feel better while it's warm. But that hot water also increases the circulation and draws more swelling to the area and will slow the whole healing process. So you'll, you'll have a more swollen ankle and it'll take longer to heal. That You're would, a man in demand. That, that would be uh, kind of important. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, So as I look at this, I have people say, well, why don't I use heat and ice? And there is definitely room for that. Um, if you're going to do heat, because it will feel looser, it will improve what you're doing right now, follow it with ice. The ice will make it stiffer initially, but it will reduce the swelling in the tissue, even if you can't see the swelling, like in your low back or in my case in the calf. Um, but it will speed that healing process because you're getting a lot of that swelling out of there immediately. Think about a goose egg on your head. If you hit your head, you could put a heat pack on there and it would actually feel better, but you'll make a bigger goose egg out of it. But Take, you, 853, and we're speaking with Dr. Jonathan Tripp, Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. It's 34 right now. Bill Colley with you as well on KLIX. The other day I was talking about football in advance of the big game and mentioned that when I was a kid in school and we would start training in August, we would all be terribly sore those first couple of weeks, and yet we were forced to go on. And, and this is a question, I guess, a lot of people will get sore after a little bit of stretching and a little bit of exercise. Do you stop for three days, or do you just sort of plow through that soreness and keep going? The answer for me would be change the exercise you're doing on the next day. You'll still be sore, but you're not doing uh, an emphasis on the same muscles you did the first day. And hopefully by the second or third day, while you continue to try to move through, or you even back off on the intensity of what you're doing. But I, w I would say continue, do something. Because if you say, oh, I'm sore, I'm just going to take today off. That really doesn't help your body or your brain figure out, I've got to change what's going on in those muscles. Because your brain is a big part of what's going on as far as where you build tissue, where you strengthen tissue. And I'm not even talking about big muscles for bodybuilding. We're just talking about the ability to accomplish the same task, do the same work. Um, it, is a, it is like a motor skill. First you develop the skill, but your brain also says, if we're going to do this on a regular basis, I need to have you build this a little differently. So I would 
I would advise you to continue through, back off so that you don't strain it, cause it more trouble, but allow soreness to be, you know, worked through rather than just simply avoided. Because, you know, soreness does tell you, you you're changing things, you're improving things. If it's a true injury that, you know, you can't hardly move, um, I still would say at first try walking through, moving through, uh, light motions, and you might find out, oh, I can do more than I thought I could when I, uh, uh, here's a great example, plantar fasciitis, first step in the morning out of bed, it, you can't hardly step on that foot, but after you take about 10 steps, you can at least tolerate getting through the day. Got about two minutes, we're going to try to squeeze a collar in. Caller, you're on the air at 855 with Dr. Jonathan Tripp on KLIX. Thank you. I'm pretty active uh, gentleman of 75 years old. I fell off my tractor last fall and wrenched my knee, and I have not been to a physician. I tried, and the appointment was five weeks out, and I thought, what the heck, what's the use? I'll be, I'll be better or dead by then, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, we're coming up on cycling season, and I'm quite a cyclist, and I've still got a sore left knee. Is there anything I can stretch? or? I mean, there are some movements twisting movements at just a sharp, like a knife on, on the inside of the kneecap. Okay. And um, is there anything I can do for that? I will try to answer that. That's a more complex question than you understand. Um, there, If it is simply an irritation of the kneecap on the femur, in other words, there's cartilage on cartilage that's been beat up and it is causing you trouble, there are some simple uh, exercises that strengthen the inside of the lower thigh that straighten out that kneecap. And so uh, one is sitting with your foot under a desk or a, a counter that the, your foot is about three inches off the floor and you turn your hip out so that it's the big toe that's taken most of the force. And you're trying to lift that whole counter up off the floor for about 10 seconds at a time and repeating that about three times. And that emphasizes that what's called the medial side or the inside of the knee, which will help to straighten out what that patella is doing. That's only if it's just that roughed up cartilage and it's tracking wrong. Um, and after about two weeks, that should be a lot better. The problem is, is the way you're explaining that, I don't have a clue whether this is a torn meniscus or something more uh, serious. There, there's ligaments on the outside called the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. They can be strained and they can take months to heal and especially if they are unprotected, you can restrain them regularly and it just doesn't quite get better. So that's when I'd say, come see me. And we want to note, uh, was it Ben Roethlisberger had a torn meniscus and he was back in action within a couple of weeks and Adrian Peterson needed three months. So the differences too can physiology can play a role. Yeah. Before we wrap up, what's the phone number at the office again? 933-4400. 933-4400. And if you uh, have a tweaked knee or a stub toe or a cut finger, come see us. want to thank Dr. Tripp for joining us this morning. And, of course, we'll be seeing him or one of his associates again next week at 8.30 Wednesday morning. Right now we're coming up on news, though, from Fox. One more hour of top story ahead. And do want to mention we're going to be talking a little bit about energy. And uh, price of oil could be dropping dramatically again. Details ahead.